Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to our lesson. We will be learning about the scientists who contributed to the discovery of cells. The six main contributors are Robert Hooke, Antoine van Leeuwenhoek, René Dutrochet, Matthias Schleiden, Theodor Schwann, and Rudolf Firko. In today's lesson, we will begin by looking at three of these contributors. Robert Hooke, Antoine van Leeuwenhoek, and René Dutrochet. I am ready to start the lesson if you are. Cells and cell development were discovered and advanced by a group of European biologists in the 17th century. Robert Hooke was an English scientist who was the first person to identify a cell in 1665. Hooke made the microscope that he used to identify the cell. The microscope looked similar to a telescope. It had two lenses at the ends of a long tube attached to a stand. When he looked at objects through his microscope, he would stick the object on a pin or mount it in front of the lower lens. At first, he worked using sunlight. He did this because only sunlight was bright enough to show him his object clearly. Later on, he added a lamp and a mirror to the microscope as sources of light. The mirror concentrated the light of the lamp and cast it over the specimen in the microscope. From then on, mirrors have been standard equipment on microscopes. Hooke viewed slices of cork under his microscope and observed pores. They were cells. He said that the pores in the cork looked like small rooms monks lived in. Because of this association, he called the pores cells. In addition to identifying a cell, Robert Hooke wrote a book called Micrographia. He explained everything a microscope could do. Hooke included notes and drawings on all of the experiments he did using the microscope. Students, let us review what we have learned so far. What is Robert Hooke known for? Take a few minutes and write your answer on a piece of notebook paper. 
Students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. If you answered that Robert Hooke is known for being the first person to identify a cell, then you are correct. Good job. Let us move on to the next scientist, Antoine van Leeuwenhoek. In 1674, Antoine van Leeuwenhoek was the first person to observe and describe living microorganisms from a sample of water. He called the moving things he saw animalcules, which means little animals. The kind of microscope that van Leeuwenhoek used was simple. He actually designed it himself. It had one lens that was placed over a hole on a rectangular shaped brass plate. It had a tiny clip that was used for holding the specimen in place near the lens. Van Leeuwenhoek was a fabric merchant and actually only an amateur scientist. He designed his microscope so he could see the quality of the fabric he was selling. He soon became curious with what else he could view under his lens. He started taking samples of pond water animal tissue, and even his own skin to look at. His curiosity not only enabled him to see a living microorganism, but also allowed him to be the first person to observe bacteria, blood cells, and protozoans. Students, let us review what we have just learned. Antoine van Leeuwenhoek was the first person to observe and describe what kind of cell. What did he call these cells? Please take a moment to write your answer on a piece of notebook paper. 
students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. Welcome back, teacher. Antoine van Leeuwenhoek first observed what he called animalcules, which we now call microorganisms. Well done! Let us move on to the last scientist of our lesson, René Dutrochet. René Dutrochet was a French physician who was responsible for many discoveries in cell theory. He published many books on his findings and he was very knowledgeable about the cell processes in plants. Most importantly, Dutrochet was the first scientist to state that all living things were made of cells. He went on to explain that all growth in living organisms is because of the volume of cells increasing or by the addition of more cells. A few other discoveries made by Dutrochet are the process of osmosis, the stomata in the epidermis of plants, how respiration occurs in both plants 
and animals, and the need for chlorophyll. Dutroche saying that all living things are made of cells was one of the most important findings in cell theory. What else did he discover? For our next activity, students, can you name two other discoveries René Dutroche made? Pick the two of these discoveries that are correct. Students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. Did you share your answers with each other? If you said that René Dutroche also discovered osmosis and respiration, then you are correct. Van Leeuwenhoek discovered animalcules. All of these scientists we learned about today helped shape our understanding of cells and how they work. This concludes our lesson today, students. To review, we learned about Robert Hooke, Antoine van Leeuwenhoek, and René Dutroche. We will learn about three more scientists in our next lesson. Until next time, thank you, students. Thank you, teacher. <laughs>